In this video, I'll reveal how my share portfolio has performed in the first half of a very turbulent year. You won't find any crypto here, just solid large cap companies paying reliable dividends, mainly in the FTSE 100. My strategy is simple, buy on a regular basis, reinvest the dividends and then forget about it. Let the magic of compounding do all the heavy lifting for you. Nothing seems to happen at first, all is quiet, but you will have sown the seeds for a money-making monster to emerge, which given enough time and proper feeding will shower you with a constant flame of passive income. I'll reveal the performance sector by sector, I'll tell you exactly what I've bought and sold this year and finally I'll compare the performance to a variety of benchmark indices and all this for free. But please consider hitting the like button as I'm told it helps some mysterious YouTube algorithm. This is not investment advice, I'm just showing you what I've been doing for the last 13 years to help you think about your own financial journey. Please do your own research. I'll describe the performance of each sector starting from the lowest to the highest. In the chemical sector, I only have one company, Croda, and the share price has had a disastrous six months, but I've been buying in for the first time this year as I sense a bargain. This figure shows the average year-to-date price change in the companies I hold in a given sector. It's only based on the companies I hold, not the industry as a whole. This figure shows how much I currently hold in the company. This figure is the year-to-date price change of the company. And because I only hold one company in the chemical sector, it will be the same as the figure at the top of the screen. And finally, here is the dividend yield per year. So for example, I hold about £3,500 in Croda, so I would expect to be paid around £50 a year in dividends. The next worst performer has been the insurance sector, down 22%, but the figures for Aviva look worse than they actually are as the company returned a large chunk of capital to shareholders. In the retail sector, I only own Tesco and it's down 11.6% this year. Despite this fall, I believe Tesco will do well over the long term. The banking sector has fallen 10.8% and I own four companies. The first two are Barclays and HSBC. And you can see there have been some very mixed fortunes for these two. Barclays has suffered mainly due to a regulatory breach earlier in the year. Some may see Barclays as a buy. I've been monitoring closely but not added to my position. However, I have bought some more HSBC shares as there appears to be some upward momentum. Lloyds and IG Group are also down significantly this year. Next is the consumer goods sector down 8.5% this year. I have two companies, Diageo and Unilever, and I've been buying more shares in these two companies than any other so far this year. And now for an ETF. This one gives you exposure to around 500 of the largest companies in the US. It's down over 8% and I've been buying more on bad days. Down 3.6% is another ETF. This time it's a FTSE 100 tracker. If I can't sense any bargains, I tend to buy a few more of these from time to time. I've been adding a few more this year. Down 3.2% is the mining sector. I've only one company, Rio Tinto, and it started the year off really well, but there has been a bit of a downtrend recently. With cyclical stocks like this, be prepared for a roller coaster ride. The dividend yield is huge at 13.9% and I'd be extremely surprised if this will be sustainable going forward. Just keeping its head above water is the utility sector up 0.2%, with National Grid and SSE both showing gains. Dividend yields are very impressive and above the FTSE 100 average of 4%. United Utilities is off the pace slightly, but the yield is good. In times of economic shocks, the utilities tend to be fairly resistant and they are an integral part of my portfolio. Up 3.6% is the renewable energy sector. Bluefield basically turns sunlight into money and Greencoat does the same with wind. Both are doing very well this year and the dividend yield is high. The Renewable Infrastructure Group has solar and wind assets and is slightly down this year, but the dividend is very respectable. The Defence and Aerospace sector is up 7.4% this year, which has seen very mixed fortunes for these two companies. BAE Systems has seen its shares rise strongly as countries around the world plan to bolster their defences. Rolls-Royce has seen its shares plummet as the pandemic has taken its toll on the aviation industry. I've been buying Rolls-Royce for the first time this year as I believe one day in the future air travel will be back to normal and all those engines would need servicing. 
The food and tobacco sector is up 9.3% this year and I've been buying more of these two. The dividend yield is high and in tough economic times these companies tend to be fairly resilient. Tate & Lyle is a company that I only started buying over the last couple of years. They are down slightly in 2022, but recently there was a return of capital to shareholders. Up 14.4% is the oil and gas sector, and I have two companies, BP and Shell. During the pandemic, the prices of these two plummeted, and I bought large amounts while they were cheap. When the share price recovered, they grew to dominate my portfolio. I've recently given them both a bit of a haircut to rebalance the portfolio and reduce risk. And the best performing sector this year has been Big Pharma, up 20.6%. AstraZeneca is up 30.7% and Glaxo has risen 10%. I've held both these companies for over a decade. Here is a quick summary of all the shares I've been buying or adding to this year. Most of these I've held for several years, but Croda and Rolls-Royce are new. There have been only two sales, BP and Shell, and I didn't sell them all, I just gave them a bit of a haircut as they were beginning to dominate the portfolio. At the moment I've got over £6,000 in cash within the portfolio. This is due to sales of BP and Shell and also a couple of companies returned some capital as they sold some of their businesses. So now let's look at the performance of the portfolio over the last quarter. At the end of March, the portfolio stood at just under 333,000 and at the time of this video, it has risen to 336,000. No new money went in at all. I was still buying shares, but it was from money already inside the platform, which came from either sales, return of capital or dividends. So in the last three months, the portfolio has shown a total return of £3,749 or 1.1% 1 .1 gain. Now let's look at the performance this year. At the start of the year, the portfolio had reached just over 301k. And as I've already shown, it's now 336k. £11,350 of new money has gone in this year. So if we deduct this from the equation, we have a gain of just under 24,000 since the start of the year. This equates to a gain of 7.9%. This year I've been putting more money than normal into the portfolio. In good times when the market is booming, I set some aside to deploy when the market isn't doing so well. I can then snap up bargains. Warren Buffett always has at least 20 billion kept aside for this purpose. I'm now going to compare the performance of this portfolio with other indices. To do this, I'm going to strip out any dividends I've received so far this year. This still gives me a gain of 6.2%. You can see in this table how the performance compares to other indices. A word of caution however, I've clearly beaten the market this year so far, but that doesn't mean I will over the long term. My gains have mainly been driven by oil, gas and big pharma, and there will come a time when these sectors underperform. Having a diversified portfolio over different sectors is recommended to reduce risk. I'm a strong believer in using index tracking ETFs, and I've been buying more of them recently. If I was starting my portfolio today from scratch, I'd be strongly considering these three as a starting point. When I began my portfolio, ETFs were not mainstream. I still like individual stocks too, as it enables me to snap up bargains when they emerge, something which I couldn't do if I was solely invested in ETFs. So what about my overall performance since I started in 2009? This is quite easy to do as I've never taken a single penny out of my Barclays platform and I know exactly how much I've put in over the last 13 years. At the start of my journey I was learning and I made plenty of mistakes. Click up here to see the mistakes I made and what I learned. In hindsight we are always wiser but I feel I'm getting better as time goes by. Here are the exact figures from the moment I started. I've been gradually drip feeding money in over the years. You can see how much I've put into my Barclays platform from the start and what it's now worth. I'm currently up over 50% if I were to sell everything today. But what motivates me the most is actually watching the dividends grow year by year. Here is a graph showing my average dividends per month and how it grows over time. You can see the effect of COVID in 2020, but it quickly recovered. And I'm currently generating a passive income of well over £1,000 a month, as well as the capital growing too. Who knows where this journey will end, but it's fascinating watching it happen. If you found any of this helpful, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more portfolio updates. 
How do you think the stock market will perform for the rest of 2022? Let me know in the comments. See you next time and happy investing.